TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. You you see the warning sign behind me, man. You know we got to put that on there. Um, Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream, man. The, u the username at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget we got Patreon. We post five days a week. And we also got merch. Uh, yeah, let's get into this, though. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. It's a warm summer evening in Knott's. Sergeant Jim Carrington and Lewis Marshall are on patrol when a familiar foe rears its head. It's like Picasso's coming out again, again at 10 o'clock at night up north. That could be going, that. Y'all call somebody? You heard the man, Sarge. Gun it. We've got a vehicle pinging cameras. We're doing the same last night, and for the past couple of weeks, it's failed to stop on numerous occasions. Please, we've got one unit up there. We're a fair way off. But we're so at this point, they really out here playing with y'all. This is this is not smart. This has got to be some youngins, though. We'll put ourselves up there. Hopefully, we can get it and uh, safely stop it and bring the uh, offenders to justice. Right, let's open the taps. The old Picasso has failed to stop for cops three times this week already. His MO is well known among interceptors. When it's failed to stop previously, they've gone off road, which for us can be a bit of a problem. We're in the next five tonight, so we stand a better chance if we do get behind it. We may be able to stay with it off road, but certainly some of the other vehicles on our uh, OS department won't keep with it um, in a field. But at this rate, off-road or on, there won't be a pursuit at all. Where is he? He's hit that southbound. Yeah, no, uh, okay, Despite several units on the ground, the Picasso remains elusive. The first police car that sees it, it's going to be a pursuit. Yeah. But the issue is, it's a massive area, and it's literally, yeah, it's, it's pinging really about all over the shop, isn't it? Recently made full sergeant, Jim's trained in firearms, T-Pack and tasers. He has a no-nonsense approach to fighting crime. I ain't gonna lie, Jim, we done seen Jim on almost every episode down there. He dang on, he might be the face of the interceptors at this point. And sitting at a roundabout all night is not his idea of proactive police work. The point to point you just had is dropped out, because I've just heard Paul saying it's had the drop on us, we've got to the next roundabout and we can't see it anymore. After a couple of hours circling the area and no further sightings of the Picasso, the boys head back into the city. This has got away from them. But while the cat's away... Is the last camera ping the one where we were sat earlier? They've picked this uh, Picasso up and a little fell to stop with it again. Uh, Whoever this is is literally outside just having a trying to have a like you know what I'm saying their version of a good time. The suspect motor was spotted Never moments ago that. heading Brindy. right for Jim and Lewis's location. Do you know roughly where they are, Jim? They've gone to Pot Street, that's the nip. The only question now is, do they feel lucky? What's that? What's that's gonna be pretty quick. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. Jim's got a live one. Contact, contact, subject vehicle. That's them in a hatchback? What is that? Yeah, what did they say that was? It's uh, now fading. Stop for us. Advanced driver, advanced car, T-Pack train. The Picasso's living up to its reputation already. Picasso. Hitting double the speed limit in a frantic bid to escape. Right, right. Spur present. And another right, right, which is Edinburgh Road. 
It's now the small hours, and thankfully, the roads are quiet. Is that a hatchback? It looks nimble. It's getting where it needs to be. I do not condone. I do not condone this type of behavior. But because of previous form, Jim reckons he knows what's coming. He's going to go off road in a minute. First, Lewis has to figure out the exit strategy. At the roundabout, not one, not one. Taking a second, a second. There's two men in the motor, and they're looking for a clean stretch of tarmac. He'll go for a down. Oh, what car? That, uh, but that, that's a, that mug kind of fast. Yeah, Bro is in a BMW X6. This little Picasso is painting pictures on him, ain't he? Quick. 14 year old Picasso versus BMW X5. Place your bets. We are now 8.5 and a 6.0. Smoking. Again, still very low. Oh, okay, never some mind. Stuff. A request is put in for stingers, and assistance can't come soon enough. Overtaking the vehicle now, wrong side of the road. We are 9.5 and a 6.0. It's not long before the runaway hits triple figures. So he's flying. Yeah, he moved. Compared to Jim's X5, the Picasso is no masterpiece, and it's certainly not built for speed. Oh, he's going to lose it. Doing seven zero to six zero. But the cocksure driver reckons he's got the upper hand. The what kind of driver? Say it one more time. Six zero. But the cocksure driver reckons he's. Hey Siri, what does cocksure mean? Oh, Siri don't even know. He's got the upper hand. No, he's, Pause. he's looking for an off. He's looking for an off road. He's now doing 111 miles an hour. Mate, we need some cars here for a tea pack. But the boys are on their own, and suddenly find themselves in the firing line. Stop, 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 stop. What did he do? something out the window? He's just clocked some missiles being hurled in his direction. Now nah, chucking stuff out the rear of the vehicle towards a police vehicle. But when Jim moves out of the way, the pesky Picasso spies his opportunity. Left, left, left on a dirt track. Within seconds, the Picasso disappears in a cloud of dust. I'm not clear where we are on a single track dirt lane. There's no, uh, no traffic, obviously. There's obviously no pedestrians. A request is made for the... This is insane. Hold on now. Chopper and dog handler Jen is also riding to the rescue. Oh, Jen here? Is someone tell me where they are, please? Towards the park, turn left up to 614. As the pursuit cuts deeper into no man's land, directing the troops is proving tricky. I think it's uh, saying freeboard lane on our site now, but it is a dog walking path. Even though Jim's going almost 60, the suspect's giving him the slip. Where is this going? We've lost sight of the uh, tail lights now. Won't be surprised if their vehicles in pretty bad weight. It's where it's going to uh, emerge. The old Picasso is a family MPV. It's not designed to handle the. Bro, how would. Whoever's driving this Picasso is. Really, really should try NASCAR or something. Because he is nowhere to Strikes be. Strikes all these speeds. It's a sight. Spoke too soon. Apologies. It's no interceptor ever wants to see. Vehicles crashed on a bridleway. We need the dog handler to us. So uh, all too predictable. We, we don't need no. We crashed on a bridleway. We need the dog handler to us. Nobody in the vehicle. They're out on foot. Both the driver and passenger of the car have vanished. What kind of condition? Dang! Oh my gosh! No, no, 
Buddy smacked this tree so hard. Look at this. This is a head. A, t a cranium smacked this window. They're in is unclear. NH, I want Empaths and a drone here, sharpish. Um, has airbags deployed on the vehicle? It's gone straight into a tree. Interceptor Rich Elliott has now arrived on the scene to help unearth the men. Stop. Stop still. Stop. But in situations like this, the cop they really need is police dog Quantum. Mm. Quantum! Yeah, we've got a little search on foot, just the immediate area, just to make sure we haven't got anyone injured. We won't go any further, we'll let the dog do his thing. Don't try and make my way to you now. Jen is still over 10 minutes away. Back in the woods. I feel like Lisa should be in this episode because we normally see these two uh, male officers that started this episode and she'd be in the ones with them. The mangled motor is giving cause for concern. There is an impact on the inside of the windscreen passenger side where the front seat passengers went into the windscreen. But again, no blood or obvious major trauma within the vehicle. A sobering sight indeed. That's crazy. The back window gone through. One of them was hanging out the back. And pass. Throwing stuff at yes. us. I'm glad we've got the vehicle. Moping, obviously, is no one injured. Um, Larry drivers, just that's, you know, shows the extent they're willing to go to to get away from us. So go we're now in the situation where we don't know where they've gone. Well, it's a massive rural area. I ain't even going to lie. It's, it ain't even this serious. Terry, I've just looked on mapping. It's about containing it, try and get Jen and Quants to us to track for Let me out. Go from there, get the drone up, get them pass up, see if we can pick up a heat source. Oh, God, so let me out. I've got Jay. away. So at the minute, I'm a bit frustrated and a bit gutted because I'd like to get hold of them. There's someone else here who'd like to get hold of them too. Jen. Yeah? Police dog Quantum's finally on the scene. Pack it in. And he's itching to get tracking. Just watch yourself. Just watch it, because he's on it. Helicopter surveillance is also en route. You can pick up the dog handler. There's a couple of us behind him. Looks like he's nose down the tracking. So you can pick up the handler, please, and just work ahead. Oh boy, where'd they go? They up a tree. Quantum's clearly got a whiff of something. It's telling me they're here somewhere. But where are they? Please, to the dog, you show yourself now! He's not wanting to go any further than this. The eye in the sky is now directly overhead, scanning the area using thermal imaging. Twin Pass, can we assume you're picking up no resources? Obviously, aside from the. Hey, where did he go? Assets. Negative, uh, we're not picking anything up. Uh, we'll get it all. Of they must have laid in some water. I'm sure they've gone to that, that dry load of trees because it was dead animated around there to the point I thought they were hiding in there. I'm just gutted because we couldn't get to them quick enough, could we? After several hours combing the woods, That's the crazy. interceptors reluctantly decide to call off the search. My gut instinct is they're in here somewhere, but the helicopter's been over. So apparently there's a lake uh, at Clumber Park. Somebody told me. Somebody says in the chat, Dungeon Demon. That's interesting. Not spotted them. That's the only thing I would imagine as well. Like, so. And we've done all the carrots. Disappointing. So we've been but they just said they've been combed through the, the comb through there for two hours. They laid in that water for two hours? Like, nah, I get it. You gotta do what it takes, but like. a few days now, so. But they'll come again, and we've got a car off them, haven't we? Yeah, Pursuit-wise, it's quick, isn't it? It always surprises me how much they get out of them cars. Um, but, and he did almost stack it a couple of times, but there's no members of the public about. We can manage the risk. The silver lining is to catch the thieves, and they've slipped the net, but you never know. They still may come. Yeah, they are. Bad guys, one interceptor, zero. Not like we keep a score or anything. Oh, oh, oh! The carp is a bit like being an Olympic athlete. Wrong spot, wrong spot. Watch your brother. It requires stamina. Stay there now! He's coming with a taser! Stay where you are! Strength. Turn the floor now! And an insatiable desire to come out on top. Go to my colleague. Yeah, mate, I'm coming. Mel yeah, you gotta be a try hard. Aim the bitch. When you're coming up against young lads, 
tracksuits, trainers, and we're big thick boots, your body armor, and then your vest with your handcuffs, your baton, your taser, everything else. It's, it's hard work, especially when, when it's warm out there. All this kit just weighs you down and restricts you, so... Who is this? The people we deal with have got a massive advantage over us when it's, you know, running away from us or we're trying to bike away from us because we're, you know, we're having to run with twice as many things on us than they've got. Where's that, sorry, H? On a Monday... Who is this? Most of us are still blowing away the cobwebs from the weekend. Yeah, running a I know him. He's familiar. This guy is new oh, for me. Cool. Um, we're have a look. But interceptors are always on the ball. Lee and Dave's day has kicked off already. I only know that she's had four males run off from her. Uh, I don't know what they've done. Not had any more information, really. A few minutes ago, a local unit lit up a suspicious looking motor nearby. The four lads inside got spooked, ditched the car, and made a run for it. You can You got this on sat -navs. Yeah, I've got it, mate. I've got it. Over Trent Bridge. Lee and Dave are one of the several units en route. Hey, should we get an Oscar Delta uh, to the meadows, please? This uh, cop's still after these four. Behind the beard, Babyface Lee's a man of many talents. Lee, Firearms, PC Lee Bully. Taser, Stinger. If you need a bad guy taking down, Lee's your man. And they're going left on Bathley Street. He's also a highly effective human sat nav. Yeah, no, left here, mate. They're saying about them going towards the tram tracks. So I don't know whether to just go towards the tram lines, mate. Let's see if we can see them coming out. Dave swings onto the tracks, but there's still no sign of the suspect or the ditched motor. Foxtrot 33, we're on the tram track side in case they come out. Meanwhile, a local unit has taken up position in the opposite corner of the estate. Bottom end towards the alleyway. So we get an officer down. The other cops have got a visual on the suspects. It runs through from Sunday's on the It's the other side. Dave does as he's told and boots it. He's got to loop the estate to Sharpish. Uh, right here. One more turn should do the trick. And then it's follow it down and pick cans on the right. Lee and Dave haven't been given a description of all the lads involved. All they've got to go on is their copper's nose. Well, these two here. They don't look like they've been running, do they? They're not sure if it's the lads they're after, but then... Yeah, they are. Go, go, go. <laughs> In situations like this, cops have to make a decision. Runners on. Runners on. They should have just kept it cool. They didn't even know who he was. Stop there, yeah, you teaser! The runners have split, so the boys take one each. Come on, the other one's gonna up They've gone back out, I'd see the lad Lee's after has got a head start and a fancy pair of trainers. Get on it, the dog off! Lee's got buckets of self-belief and a taser. Get on the floor! Oh my god. Who is Lee? Brother is like the Terminator. He is hawking bro down. <laughs> Get on the floor now! Oh, he Get just gave up. Yeah. Put your hands out. Robust tactics deliver instant results. Put your arm out! Should have should should have took the shiesty off. Maybe you can breathe. Right behind you. This young lad is going nowhere. This one. One detained camo jacket. Don't know where the ones ran. But his mate appears to have slipped the net. Stand up for me, nice and easy. I'm not gonna lie, either either this perpetrator was very slow, or Lee is just incredibly. <laughs> Fast. One, two, three. <sighs> what we get? The one with the shorts and baseball cap and the navy jacket is the one who's outstanding. We've got the lad in the camera. While the lad's taken off to be searched, attention turns to the one that got away. It went up, um, yeah. got just the, uh, and then they both ducked back, so I think oh, one went the other way. Yeah. Suddenly, cops are aware of a disturbance nearby. <laughs> Having barely caught his breath, Lee's off again. Is that Lisa? Yes, him. Having barely.
No, that ain't Lee. Caught his breath, Lee's off again. He asked him. It seems there's been a bit of a pile on. Put your hands on your back! They've caught the second runner, but it's taken five officers to keep him under control. Hey, have you got anything dangerous on you? Myself. Yourself? Yeah, Come that's on, myself. <laughs> he clearly fancies himself as a bad boy, but the only... I've got a whole ponytail talking about myself. ...thing dangerous about this lad is his sense of direction. He obviously don't know where they are because he's just been walking around, hasn't he? Yeah. He ran and just walking around again. Yeah. With two in cuffs, a picture is beginning to emerge of what happened. I think a police car has seen a car doing a manoeuvre. Followed it. Uh, followed a little bit, and then the four guys have got out and just starburst from it. But why, though? Even weighed down with 15 kilos of kit, Lee caught up with a lad less than half his age. That was good. 43. Still got it. But there's still a few unanswered questions. I don't like to be giving cops credit, but I'm not gonna hold you. Lee, that was impressive. I can't even hold you. That was that was impressive. He really did hog him down. <laughs> right, find the car. They've got no drugs and no weapons. An H Fox Shot 33. So it's not entirely clear why the lads were so keen to get away. Could you just let us know where the vehicle in the meadows is parked? A look at the motor they apparently abandoned could shed some light. Was it stolen? Where is it? It'd be that thing there. Is it that one? Sure. It must be. They found the car, and that's not all. Uh, Mum's car. Lads, uh, 10 years driving it. So I think uh, he's going to get de arrested anyway. He's going to get drug wiped. Right. It seems the cops have stumbled across suspect number three, the young driver. Honestly, you are. Honestly, you bloody. The car yes, belongs to his mum. Yes, you are. And I'm although Lee wants a word with him, he'll have to get in line. You think before you do something stupid, OK? What do you mean? It turns out he's just 14 years old. Oh, my God. Shorty out here bugging. Understandably, mum's not too thrilled he took her motor for a spin. Honest to God, honestly, you bloody... He was better off just getting caught. You need to keep inside all the time, basically locking the cage. That's it. Simple as this. If you, you kill somebody in a car, you're not just getting a telling off. You're going to prison. You're going to prison. Just don't do it, mate. Think about what you want to do. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I was... Let me finish. Let me tell you, brother. I was in court today, right? I told you I got a suspended license. I sat in court for two hours. My court date is not till tomorrow. They told me, oh, you're not here. You're tomorrow. I'm... Ah. Okay. But in the midst of that, I have to tell y'all this. There was a lady in there. She was older. She was in her, like, 80s. She was with a lawyer. She was in there with her lawyer. And they giving her her time, like, like what she need to do. And the, the, the district attorney, the city was like, the city of Chicago, they was like, oh, yeah, this is a homicide. Not a homicide. This is a, a loss of life. I was, a loss of life? Wait a minute. They gave this lady what was her her punishment was um suspended license for two years, four hour class it was an eight hour in person class, traffic class, but then she says she doesn't drive anymore because of what happened. So it was four hours online class and a seven hundred five hundred dollar fine, two hundred dollar court fee. Let that have been me. Oh my god, this lady! I she got she got the like I that was whoever her lawyer is. I need to get in touch with him because he got her basically seven hundred dollar fine and 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 some time wasted for a whole life. It's insane. And then the second one, they didn't even know that there was loss of life. It wasn't even noted on the no on the in the pro uh, proceedings. They didn't have no idea until somebody just stumbled across it and, or remembered it. I was like, "This is so ghetto." Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on in here. I was looking like, "Bro, about to get away with him." That's tough.
Yeah, and make your mum proud rather than upset. Well, yeah, I just had to say that. Yeah. It was wild today. There's nothing quite like a few words of fatherly wisdom from an interceptor. The young chap won't be getting nicked, but fingers crossed he's learned his lesson. Like he's 14 years old, he's sat in the car with his mates, which mum was happy with, and then at some point he's decided to drive it. Um, and unlucky for him, at that moment in time, police cars pulled into the street, which is where this has all kind of started, where they've all run away. We've got tasers, we've got dogs if they're running away, we've got all that kind of stuff, you know. Notwithstanding the fact that, you know, they get taken to the floor and handcuffed. Um, and they just don't think about that. They just think it's a, it's a laugh, you know. They're just sat in the car with the mates. Probably been goaded a little bit. And then uh, next thing, it's rolling off the drive and Definitely we're going for a little jaunt around, around the close. The lad's two mates were de-arrested and no charges were brought. The young driver later returned a negative drug wipe. However, he was still issued six penalty points and fined £92 for driving without insurance or a full licence. Bro got six points and don't even got a licence. But the harshest punishment of all will surely come from Mum. His Mum, she's got three or four police cars outside her house and all the neighbours can see that, So, and, that, and I'm sure that's not what she wanted. Bit of a stupid decision, really, for a 50-yard joyride. Still to That's embarrassing. Then let hold on now. Let's not let the mom get away with anything. Why would you let that man and his, his three friends sit in the car? Like, what was the point of it? And then you gave him the key. Oh, you should have known better than that. Since forming in 2016, the Knox Knife Crime team have taken more than 450 deadly weapons off the streets. Very dangerous weapon. It's used for nothing else other than violence and uh, causing injury to people. And these elite cops know the quickest way of finding a knife carrier... Oh, there we go. Class A and B. ...is to follow the drugs. It's concealed, mate. An ounce of crack cocaine and also about an ounce of heroin. Allegedly. It's a really good result. Intelligence for, for knives and people carrying knives is quite rare. It's something people don't see realistically when somebody's carrying a knife, but the intelligence comes through about the drugs because the dealing on the streets is open for people to see. The people we're targeting are mainly um, organised crime groups or urban street gangs and the knives and the weapons come hand in hand with that. They make their money through selling drugs and they have to protect that. So taking the drugs off them, off the streets, is definitely a win for us. It's an older school way of thinking of it, but it, I mean, it, it's, it's still that, but like, it's a little more intricate now. But for the On most the damn part, Thursday evening, knife crime team stalwart Ken and Joe are cruising the inner city suburbs. Yeah. yeah. Someone has caught their eye. Hello. We've got that lad. He's just walking towards the state. Okay. We've spotted a young lad walking down one of the side streets in this housing estate in, uh, in Radford. We had an encounter with him probably about a week ago in close proximity to class A drug users and uh, hopefully we can catch him red-handed mid-deal with some drugs on him. Ken's a man of simple pleasures. A night in with a pizza and an action movie is number two on his list of yeah. all-time favourite yeah. hobbies. Yeah. Number Talk one to him, Ken, a night in with a pizza and a movie? I hey, listen, I can't even cap. That sounds like a smooth little night. That list is catching drug dealers red-handed. I think he might have took the footpath because I can't see him anywhere around here. To help catch his man, Ken's leaving nothing to chance. And today, he's got eyes all over the estate. What are we thinking? Are we think you just jump on him or hop him for a bit first. Interceptors Dan and Mark are circling the same area. We're just coming over to him. Eyes right, chaps. They clocked two suspected users lurking in an alleyway. They look like kids. 
Uh, this is Nottingham City, my bad. Also circling the area is an unmarked surveillance unit that's feeding intel to Ken and Joe. Just uh, coming out now. Yeah. He's dealt to him. Yeah, he's dealt to him then, Auntie. And there's two more waiting. With suspected users loitering all over the estate, Ken reckons it's only a matter of time before he gets his man. At the minute, um, plane officers just got a view of him in some alleyways uh, where we are at the minute, and we know there's some more users waiting nearby. So I'm, I'm hopeful that if we just take a time, we can we can catch this lad. After a couple of minutes, Joe spots something. Uh. That's weird, man. I, I want one of these these UK police officers, just like on some vacation type vibe, to come do a to do, come do a ride along with like a like a police officer in like California or or Arizona or like one of these cities that do heavy 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 drug population. I'm interested in let's see in that. Uh, there's a young lad just come out, all in white, with a black coat. Just because they're going to see how often the police don't care. They're going to continue on with their day. Hold on. It's a second suspect, and he's heading straight into the path of the undercover unit. Can you see behind us if he comes out further up? He's going now. The team reckon they've just seen the man hop into a motor with suspect number one. That car's parked up. That lad is passing through that vehicle. It's the queue they've been waiting for, so Ken rolls out. Just on. Do that to turn to. Dan and Mark are closing in too. Coming round up the street. The two suspects are sitting in a parked up Ford. They're in a cul-de-sac, but there's a maze of footpaths and alleyways they could disappear into. If you come up with let's strike this together so we can get both contained. Plan A is to launch both cop cars into the street to box in the Ford. But the boys need a plan B in case the lads do a runner. Chase them. Do you want to let me out and I'll go down there? Yeah. Just jog round. While Joe heads off on foot, Dan and Mark get ready to lead the strike. Say when, Joe. Now. It's showtime. <coughs> Where is it? Let's see it. This one. This one here, yeah. yeah. yeah he's going to move. <laughs> the lads in the Ford never even saw it coming. Oh, oh, what what get your hands up, mate. Mate, on, mate, keep your hands working soon. Yeah, yeah, you can't get out, mate, because I've got the car. He'll have it in his pants. You're obviously a bit nervous. What's going on, mate? You got any drugs in the car on you? No. Right, stinks of cannabis, and obviously we've had some information that you're dealing drugs, all right? We're dealing drugs? Yeah. I've only got tobacco on the road. Right, OK, well, still we are then, mate, all right? The passenger remains trapped in the motor. Keep your hands working soon. Hands, hands yeah, I want, you, I want to see your hands, mate. And Ken reckons he's up to no good. Taking the piss, man. We believe he's just been involved in drug dealing, mate. Okay, just step out for us. The boys are convinced he's just stashed something. You got anything on you I should know no, about? I don't. Anything that's going to hurt me or you? No, I don't. Okay. I'm just going to lift your arms up so my colleague can have a look around your waistband, mate. The men's pockets are clean, but Ken and the boys are determined to see this one through. Realistically, you're going to be detained for a strip search, all right? We'll speak, to, yeah, we'll get an authority from a, an inspector, explain the circumstances, Whatever. and uh, we'll go from there, buddy. Imagine they don't find nothing. What if they really don't have nothing? Okay. Whatever, bro. Well, I'm not going to have nothing anyway, because you get me. Yeah, obviously, we have reason to think you might. That's the whole point of why we're doing what we're doing, buddy, all right? The sweep of the motor turns up a suspected burner phone and a small amount of cannabis. Somebody said, why Why do I always have this dusty cap on? Because this is the crib, man. You know what I'm saying? I had a brand new one, but it got lost. I don't know where it is. Like, I spent $35 on a new one because this one was getting old. And it was time to replace it, but I, I couldn't find it. So now it's like, all right, well. Both men are off to the neck. Have you got anything you shouldn't have? 
After being booked in, their handcuffs are removed before the intimate search begins. Okie dokie, so now's the uncomfortable bit. Just pull your boxes down Intimate for me. search? Sounds like Ken has drawn the short straw. You've got something on your bum, mate. Stop oh, resisting. Stop. You'll get tased. Stop resisting. Get some assistance in here. Get going for it. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. Stop the station. No. Stop resisting. I've got, I've got this. Out. No. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. With the help of interceptor Dan Mottishaw, the man is back in cuffs. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. This is a crazy situation. Imagine getting strip searched and finding something up your, your, you know what I'm saying? And you start rumbling and tussling naked. You ain't got no clothes on. You just moving every way possible. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no, you just at your most vulnerable. Like where where did where do you plan to go? You're in the station. What are you doing? <laughs> You're nude. You are nude. There are no clothes on your body. Just chill. And don't don't go telling the story because we don't want to hear about it on the block. You know what I'm saying? That's peak. We go. Hey, listen. Stay still. Him. All this breathing hard and panting, and you nude. You're nude. You nude and out of breath. And ain't no women around. That's crazy. Attempt to supply a controlled drug. And under arrest. Three five pewits. Nude. But now the drama's over. The lad in the white trousers is fighting in there, um, and basically a. Uh, small bundle of we need to be class A raptors to uh, come from him. He's tried to conceal it and by doing that he's trying to fight and kick at cops. So he's been 3-5 uh, at the moment, arrested for uh, possession of intent to supply class A. Yo, go on, you found my smoke. While the man's carted off, Joe's taking a look at his stash, which thankfully has now been sealed in an evidence bag. This has come out his pants. It's Look like it got a little bubble on it. The booboo stash. Inside, we've got quite a large wrap of brown powder, which we think is going to be heroin. And also in there is a few loose lumps of uh, white rock, which we believe is going to be crack cocaine. The wraps of white powder, there's a, there's a few in there, so they're £10 each. But it all need weighing and seeing how much it is. The wraps will be sent off to the lab for analysis. Whatever the powders are, the man has claimed they're for his personal use only. Yeah, he ain't got no socks on. But the night isn't over yet. Do you want me to get some trousers for him? Yes. As all cops know, drugs and weapons are a regular double act on the street, albeit a deeply unpleasant one. Following further investigations, Ken wants another chat with a man in the white trousers. There's been a report of uh, a fight or an altercation between two lads involving weapons. Officers have conducted some CCTV inquiries and you've been identified from it wearing white trousers, which is why I want your trousers. And as such, I'm arresting you on suspicion of a fray. Right. The man's white... Bro got the same pants on? ...trousers have landed him in double trouble. A regrettable fashion choice in more ways than one. The CCTV footage of the man in the white trousers proved inconclusive and no charges were brought in relation to the alleged oh, yeah. okay, affray. Both men have been released under investigation for possession with intent to supply Class A substances. As part of the investigation, no charges were brought for the suspected cannabis. Okay. Got 10 minutes left in this episode. Cops on the knife crime team targeting drug hotspots is only part of the equation. They're trained to respond swiftly and robustly to any weapons related incidents, especially if it means they get a blade off the street. Paul Kingston and Chantel McDowell are just getting wind of something. Chantel McDowell. Welcome. Serious. The victim is that uh, possibly have 
The incident has occurred at a property five miles south of Mansfield. Oh, we've seen some tail before, right? Maybe. Let's get it towards the offender's address. A woman has reportedly been attacked with a Stanley knife. On jobs like this, every second counts. Next right. By who? Another this unit is already on the scene. Yeah, go ahead. We're within about 30 seconds, Mark. The suspect has been apprehended. But he's not exactly coming quietly. Can you yeah, right. wait? In you go. Step in. Hey. Get in, get in. Ah. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get While Kingo introduces him to the van. Listen. Ah. Chantel's priorities. Is that Santa? Fly with the victim. Ow. Whereabouts is the wound? Is it on the right hand side? Or? Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep oh, breathing for me. Oh, the are on the way. They're not oh, this is serious. While they tend to the gash on her neck, it's down here. Kingo reckons he's found the blade that did it. There's a Stanley knife on the floor. Bro is definitely going to jail for an attempted M. Oh, it's for me. 100%. Knife's here, mate. He's going to be all of this. You see, this is why I stopped drinking. I ain't even going to hold you because bro sounded drunk. Bro really sounded drunk. And he did all of that. I probably on some probably they got into a dumb argument, but you know, it's over it's overly done because they drunk. And now you going to jail for an AM. Proud local lad Kingo became a cop to help protect his community. And he's picked up two chief constable commendations for his efforts. You put on the log the uh, weapon used. It's just outside the uh, rear door to the property at the side of some bins. We've got it on body one. Within minutes, paramedics arrive to assume control. 8339, got laceration to the throat, arterial bleed. But it's clear the situation remains critical. Oh, it's going to hurt, sweetheart. You've just got to stay with us. All right. I'm so all right. sorry, sweetheart. You can see all over the sofa and all over her clothes how much it's spurted out. So all you can do is put pressure on her wound on her neck to stop her bleeding or prevent her bleeding as much as we could. Uh, but paramedics really quick on the scene, so they've taken over. Back on the street, cops are trying to get to the bottom of what went down. Yeah, let's hear the story. Just chill. You ain't just chill. I was trying to murder my daughter. She's That's your daughter? She's yeah. my daddy. I dropped me watching football. I got to down there, so I go there. Yeah. So you was trying to watch the football game, and she turned it off, and you hit her with a Stanley knife. That's insane. This is your daughter. The bearded man claims to be the victim's father, and while the incident is about as serious as it gets, the alleged motive is even more shocking. It was a row over football. All right. I killed my daughter over football. The suspect has said that he's killed his daughter because she wouldn't let him watch the football. That's what apparently this is over. That's so dumb. You see what I'm saying? You see what liquor do to you? It make you make stupid decisions like that. That was dumb. In the UK, 92% of violent attacks against women are committed by someone they know. Thankfully, this victim's critical condition has now been stabilised by two teams of paramedics. The um, knife has caught two of her arches. But it seems to have got it in control, really. The woman is heading straight to hospital, leaving behind her home, which is now a crime scene. I'm glad she survived, because that would have been a crazy story to be telling in jail for her dad. Luckily, the oh, he's still going to tell her in the store in jail. He's, he's gone. He's getting at least 15, 13, 10, 10, 10 plus. Tim's still obviously alive, but it is life threatening. So we've put a scene on at the address. Um, so obviously CSI can come out, do their thing, uh, recover. Danko, uh, 344, salute for the sub. Appreciate the you. Yeah, I've dealt with this chap quite a few times. He's very drunk and obviously... Something quite horrific's gone off in that address. Um, lady's got life-threatening injuries. 
Uh, but luckily, paramedics were here quite quick, giving advanced medical care, so fingers crossed she'll make it. Distressing as it may seem, today's incident is an all too familiar sight for the cops, especially a seasoned interceptor like Kingo. I've been in the police 14 years. Um, to be honest, nothing surprises me anymore. I think after a few years' service, you just get a bit, a bit used to seeing the worst in people and what they can do when they've either had a beer or when they're angry and upset. Someone gets upset over something quite trivial, things are said. And um, sometimes people choose to do silly things. Fortunately, the female victim survived the attack. The man was charged with attempted murder. At his trial, he was found guilty and got 22 years behind. Hey, oh, God, 22? Oh my God. You deserved it, 100%, but dang, that's tough. I was thinking 10, but they smacked him with 22? Bars. Still to come. I think the judge was like, this is such a stupid reason. We got to give you the maximum that we can. It's late on a Wednesday. That's crazy. Spencer Pugh and Ian Coleman are out in the X5 when they get word of a suspicious vehicle across town. That's a black ball, we see 30 originally showed in Somerset. It's on with the twos and off to the rescue. So we're just um, heading to go and support one of our uh, road crime colleagues who's behind uh, a car which we believe is going to be a clone. The registration comes back to uh, a Somerset address, um, so obviously it's peculiar that it's going to be up here in the Nottingham area. It's entirely possible the Volvo was trip. driven 200 miles up from Somerset for a short midweek break. Possible, but unlikely. So we're looking for a black Volvo C30. Cloning number plates is one of the fastest growing car crimes in the UK, having risen by 400% in the past six years. Sometimes it can be a cover for uh, criminality, drug dealing, burglaries, vehicle thefts. Quite often, uh, it's simply uh, somebody doesn't want to pay for insurance. You know what's crazy, man? I, I, like I, about the last case, like you know what type of fit? Like she, her, the daughter's gonna have so much PTSD. She's gonna have to go like to therapy. Like that's messed up. Yeah. And so they'll just clone. That's messed up for him to even do that to his daughter. Like I couldn't even imagine. Own the vehicle uh, to to hide that fact and try and um, make use of somebody else's insurance payments but this one's come up as quite suspicious because it's come from completely the other end of the country. He may not be in the hot seat tonight, but Ian's no slouch behind the wheel himself. A top. Y'all know I've never watched Game of Thrones. Should we watch Game of Thrones on Patreon? I've never seen it. I've never seen not one episode. So... Tactical driver, he thrives on teamwork. Little surprise then that he's also a sucker for a nice tidy tea pack. Got a car behind oh. it at the moment, so we're just going to go and give them some options for a, uh, a preemptive boxing. There are now four unmarked cop cars tailing the Volvo. Are we on it? Yeah. Spence and Ian are bringing up the rear. Speed in three zero miles per hour. Ahead of them is dog handler Coops. Suddenly, the Volvo attempts to double back. Yeah, go on. Head on, head on, head on. You turn if you want to. Coops is having none of it. The suspect's been boxed in on all sides. Get out of the car! Get out of the car now! It's yeah, all these officers got firearms. Buddy. Seems the three chaps inside need a bit of gentle persuasion. See about off. See about off. Out the car. Get out the car. Keep your hands where I can see him. Come to me. Turn around. Hands behind your back. They tried. Whose car is it? Uh -huh. I don't know. The lad appears a little confused. 
Perhaps he's tired after the long drive up from Somerset. Just go and take a seat at back of our car over here. What's up? With the driver and both passengers being questioned, Spence takes a moment to appreciate a fellow interceptor's handiwork. Was this you, Coops? Yeah. Good work, mate. Yeah. Good work. Uh, no contact there, is there? No. Get a bit of paper through there. To be fair, Ian said to me, go for it, and then you did it. So it's a great, it could have well, been. Yeah. <laughs> it's clocked that it's been followed by a number of unmarked police vehicles, and then it's had an opportunity to do like a, a reciprocal on the roundabout. Fortunately, one of our dog handlers uh, oh, was uh, on point tall. there and has, has nosed it off. It's been blocked in from behind. Let's give it nowhere to go. And absolutely, it would have failed to stop, I think, if, uh, if it had the chance. No, 100%. It turns out there's in the car like, oh my, the jig is up. The motor is linked to drug dealing and a different set of plates in the boot fuel suspicions that it's a clone. We'll do some further yeah, inquiries, but at jail. the moment we're working on the assumption it's a stolen vehicle. Meanwhile, cops continue their search. Lots of intel for drugs, but the car's clean. No drugs are found in the car or on the lads who were in it. All right then, all the best. Cheers, mate. Cheers. The passengers are free to go, and now Ian's got some results on the Volvo's ID. We've checked out the plates. Uh, it's not a stolen car, uh, but the driver's obviously driving without insurance, and there's going to be some document offences that they're going to deal with. Uh, there's no drugs in the car, there's no stolen property. Uh, not found anything on them, so it's just going to be driving offences uh, and, the, uh, and the false plates. Midweek night shifts. We want something to happen, no doubt at all. That was going to fail to stop, so, yeah, your heart gets pumping for a little bit. Um, but, um, good, safe conclusion, no damage, no injuries, everybody accounted for, it's all good. <coughs> no action was taken against either of the passengers. However, the chap behind the wheel was charged with driving without front or rear registration plates, driving without a full licence and driving without a one year insurance. Band. Eight points and a £660 fine is not what he bargained for from this stake. Eight, eight points and a £660. What's more, no cop... That's better than being banned, for sure. ...cars were injured during the execution of the T-Pack. There's an inch there. Look at that. Perfect. No contact. Tight. I like it. No paperwork. Yes. Well, relax. <laughs> TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. That was, I'm not going to lie, that was a fully entertaining episode. From almost, from almost from start to finish. Salute.